Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, my friends, and welcome back to the Cozy Club. I cannot believe it, but the month of March is all but over, and with it has come a brand new meta within Disney Sorcerer's Arena. A whole new cluster of characters have entered a fresh new meta as we've seen new character refreshes, a ton of bug fixes that changed how characters work, and well, Cozy Club, <laughs> a lot has changed. You see, the meta in the best teams in PvP used to be all about damage. I drop my rock on you, you die, I win. And then we entered this kind of control harmful effect meta with the arrival of Maleficent and a ton of great harmful effects. You would drown the enemy, controlling and puppeting them until, well, slowly, you lose. Good day, sir! And now, here we are. At the end of March, the emergence of Kida so much has changed, and it's all about survival, baby. And as we know, Snow White is just around the corner, which is bound to shake even more things up. And after that, and the dust has settled, I'll get a tier list out. But now, let's begin with the top 25 characters in Disney Sorcerer's Arena. PvP Edition. <laughs> Alrighty, it's time to blast through the top 25 characters in DSA for PvP. Now I need to say, if you haven't joined the Cozy community over on Twitch, you're missing out. You're missing out on early looks and breakdowns for all of my videos here on YouTube. We do fun and interactive games, and quite honestly, a community filled with pure dopamine. Now, as always, we're going to start this list off with the honorable mentions. Now, pay attention because the rankings are razor thin this time. And arguably, we're in this wide open meta where up to rank 16 to all the way to 40 could be neck and neck with one another. And in the right team in the right place, all of these characters could cut the top 25. Some of these characters are so good, like Pain and Panic, that are really there to just control the enemy and shut down an opposing Zeus. They're the ultimate counter to anything out there. Or we all know Frozone has a ridiculous kid and if he gives his buffs to someone like Namari or Elsa, you lose. He's a little on the slow side, but if he gets a turn, it's it's GG. Moana, Randall, Mickey Mouse, Lily, we're all really tough to leave off the list because in the right teams, they can easily take out the entire enemy team. Lily with Frank is amazing and Maui is so great when contributing to the survival meta however sadly for our favorite adventurer milo has dropped from the top 10 all the way down to the honorable mentions due to the giant nerf that he took and lastly for the honorable mentions a lot of people on their list had fix it felix the guy can heal like crazy he's used to get ralph and a lot of people have him ever since they fixed his passive the guy's a stud and he keeps your characters alive a whole lot longer again don't get too caught up with these guys not making the top 25 they are still elite and within the right team. They're some of the best characters within the game. At number 25, we have... So, we meet again, but like you. Guys, Zerg is always so tough to place within the game, within the meta. He does one thing well, and he's done that thing well since the game has come out. If Zerg is able to eliminate people, he snowballs so well. And with a hero mod upgrade right to him for an instant turn, Zeus, Frozone, you name it, he's still one of the most reliable DPS characters within the game. Number 24 on our list is Miguel has been in a great spot ever since he came out, and it's mainly due to his leadership. He's got that kind of Sean Yu effect. They're one of the better factions within the game. He gives turn meter, his survivability is great, and he's used all the time to give people the upper hand. Now, it's not all about speed these days, but Miguel is going to be vital if you're running a mythical team, and he comes in at number 24. At number 23, we have... I was on TV! Mike is a very interesting character. He fits in so many different teams, and with the arrival and the emergence of all these characters with insane basic attacks, Scare Tactics is one of the main reasons Mike is in this top 25. One of the best abilities in the game, he's got an amazing AoE, a solid basic, and all around the board, he fits into so many different teams. You're going to see different characters rise in this kind of meta that can work with multiple other characters instead of one specific faction. Number 22. Oh, man. Esmeralda could arguably be so much higher, guys. Like, if you don't have Tiana, Esmeralda is such a great character. Her survivability. She's like the second fastest character in the game. Not enough could be said about that. Jolly provides great damage. She can cleanse passively. And then Feast of Fools. Feast of Fools will always be one of the best abilities 
especially right now with these characters that have such crazy basics. You can make the whole princess team pretty much kill each other if your Esmeralda pops off that turn. When asking other players about their placement of the top 25, we asked a ton and thanks to everyone I reached out. Esmeralda was all over the board. Top 10, top 20, top. She's everywhere because she does so much for your team and very solid free to play investment. At number 21, finally the arrival of. Does it feel good to be out of there? If you have not hopped on the Genie hype train yet, come on down. There are plenty of seats, guys. Genie is phenomenal, mainly because of the presence that he has on the battlefield. If he has one other character, he's going to be sniping down anyone on the field. And he's one of the few characters on this list you do have to have pretty much maxed out to get the most viability out of him. But what I love is they have to go after him first. His ability to revive and protect characters like you're seeing here is what makes him so great. He has a finisher with a real firecracker. He just remains the Swiss army knife of DSA. Tremendous character from top to bottom. Moving into the top 20, we have... Yes, I hit it. Man, Hades is just, there's not a lot to say about him. He's a mythical, he has great stats, insane damage, and it's just one of the most pure forms of damage within the game. The way that his factions align and the way that he spits out damage is so consecutive and consistent. Guys, Hades is such a large investment. He works on the villains, he works on the mythicals, he even works as a plug and play. He takes a ton of investment, but with that, you're getting one of the best damage dealers within the game. At number 19, an overwhelmingly favorite. Let's finish this, Venturi. Oh, Namari. Namari could be ranked in the top 10. She could be ranked. I mean, she's so freaking good, guys. Probably one of my favorite characters in just like the purest forms of being a BA, right? Like her assassin ability is always clutch. And right now in this kind of survival meta that we're living in and that the game's going to be progressing to, Namari's the answer. Namari's able to finish off opponents before they can get healed up. And quite frankly, that's the best thing about her kit. She's so reliable. She does so much damage and she benefited pretty much the most from the upgrade from gear seven to gear eight to now gear nine. Number 18. 2319. Soli is arguably the best free to play character. You're getting everything you could possibly want from someone that has legendary worth of damage and protection. He's a little bit on the slow side, but his basic pumps out Buku numbers. He has an amazing taunt, incredible survivability. Soli does it all and is one of my favorite investments. If I was starting out today, Soli would be one of the first characters I would farm and put gear into. And then eventually combine him with Mike Wazowski. You have a duo that can fit into literally any team. I will use that duo with success with Kingdom, Mythical, Princesses, just them two with three other great characters. They're going to get the job done. Number 17. Kingdom Speed Lead. Next. Number 16, the newly refreshed. Man, that refresh was so freaking crazy for Yzma, guys. I mean, seriously, she's busted. She's so busted. I mean, she can take turn meter. She gives it to herself. All of her abilities do something amazing. She's flat out just like broke. She's so good on so many levels. The only kind of knock to her is her overall survivability. But Yzma is one of the most tried and true consistent characters that if you're struggling keeping up with the enemy and you just need to jump up from free to play to those pay to play teams, Yzma is just your golden ticket free to play. And that's what I love. Soli and Yzma, great characters. You're going to use them in both the raid and PVP. Farm them. Number 15. Who are you? And how did you find me? Rapunzel just got a major refresh and she is bonkers. You have to take her out first. She's going to revive everyone on the team. Great turn meter mechanics, an awesome basic, and obviously one of the best leaderships within the game. Let me just say this, the princesses all together are easily my favorite team within the game for consistent results in PvP. At number 14... Start hiring crews. I want to begin as soon as possible. One of the most consistent character that I saw on people's rankings was Xanatos. Between his speed and the Steel Clan Gargoyles, he's the new Baymax with a very fast taunt, he has the tech faction tag to make him even faster. Great damage, a passive that speaks wonderfully with the rest of his kit. Again, a little bit on the squishy side, but with the way that these summon gargoyles go, just complete bonkers. Now, contrary to what you might think, Xanatos is a great plug and play and fits with pretty much most teams. At number 13. Every morning, just the same. Since the morning that we 
we came. Oh, guys, just so many princess characters on this top 25. And Belle just got a great fix to one of the bugs with her passive. The ability to call multiple characters to attack. They did fix some things about her that took her down as far as the dependability of the assists that she does call. And Intimidate isn't what it used to be, but it doesn't matter. Belle is still so consistent. She works on so many teams. And again, I sound like a broken record, but with Snow White, she's going to get even better. Number 12. What is there to say? Show yourself great damage really easy character to invest in because you know she's always going to be relevant guys people like elsa her entire kit is based off helpful effects and that's never going away super safe investment elsa's crazy at number 11 we have a bit more plug and playable and consistent legendary i'm gonna wreck it uh wrecked ralph is finally being able to shine the one thing that he does so tremendously well is pvp and we're about to enter more and more buffs coming into the enemy team via zeus and kita and some of these other characters ralph can get rid of all of them in a second great damage a complete exterminate ability with a good aoe a good single target damage he is so consistent you can ignore him on the other team however if you mess up you will lose more battles to ralph than any other character finally breaking into the top 10 we have <laughs> <laughs> Ursula is the Zeus of year one. Her kit is so loaded with so many things going on. She's consistently great. With T9, she got an awesome boost to her overall damage, which was what she was lacking a little bit, but a little bit of magic got that extra boost to damage. She can wipe out anybody with that or her basic attack. And then in the meantime, if that doesn't work and Tion is dead, you can polymorph silence and just mess up the other team. She's a great control unit packed into one character. However, because of the introduction to a couple of characters, those eels are finally becoming a liability. At number nine, -la 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 -la. Cozy Club, Speed, Wins, and Hiramata is the fastest of them all. An ability that can upgrade any character in the game to get a free turn will never not double negative be amazing. Hero is a one trick pony, but it is all about speed. And this is a turn based game, which keeps him in this top spot. I hate to see it, but even in free to play early teams, mid game teams, and even into late game, Hero is still a solid investment of a character. He's had to be nerfed several times and they haven't nerfed him enough. He's cracking into the top 10. At number eight, going to be a shock to most of you. <laughs> now, hear me out, guys. A lot of people had Maleficent dropping within PvP. Still, if not the best, one of the top three best characters overall within DSA. But Maleficent in PvP, her time is starting to pass. She's the queen of control. And with the shift of the meta, she's losing that foot ground. Don't worry if you're investing, just got her or plan on using her. She's going to be fine and work in so many teams. Her leadership is starting to see some counters, but Maleficent is always going to be great. She has amazing tags with kingdom and villain. More villains are going to come out. She's going to make her way back in. At the moment, though, she did drop all the way to number eight. At number seven, we've got the newly refreshed queen of damage. I'm the princess. Merida is the best damage dealer in the game, and it doesn't even come close. She's only going to get better because of Snow White. Her basic is insane. All of her specials do ridiculous amounts of damage. Like, Merida is only lacking some synergy. And if Wilds get a speed lead, Merida becomes a top two, top three character in the game. Everybody at this point should have Merida on their roster. There's no reason not to invest in her. They showed that they're going to double down on how crazy she is with her damage. Her abilities are insane. She's a one woman wrecking crew. Number six. We have talked about the beast so much on this channel that I'm not going to spend much time on him. But Master the Castle is one of the best, if not the best, single passive within the entire game. Great kit. He got fixed to be able to be enraged and empowered even more, pumping out more of that damage and not just playing this tank survival role. Beast is consistent. Beast is one of my favorite characters, especially early on. Once you unlock some of the more key characters, 
get beast he is the jack of all trades and now listen at these top spots six to like four could all be interchangeable they all do multiple roles on the team and depending on your setup they're gonna fit that role better beast is an offense and tank powerhouse we are on to the top five baby and coming in in fifth place within pvp in the march best characters it's going to be what the rock is cooking dwayne the rock johnson the legendary without being a legendary guys frank is just one of the most dependable characters within the game what does frank do well it's easier honestly to say what doesn't he do well he's an incredible plug and play tank with some of the best abilities in the game backside of water is better than some entire character kits out there and then you've got proxima proxima is great for so many different reasons but outside of the damage what i love about her is have you ever been in that position where the enemy has five turns to your one? Well, the thing I love is when Proxima gets summoned, it instantly allows you to reset, maybe use some of your spells, your sugar rush, and get that advantage back into the battle. Now, he's not in a top three territory because his leadership and the adventurers are fading a little bit, but still many would agree that Frank is one of the best characters within the game for player versus player combat. And very quickly at this spot too, you might as well put Lily, not this high, but Lily and Frank are peanut butter and jelly. Lily's so great. Honorable mention character, very solid. She depends on Frank to do her job well, but uh, she's so incredible with the sheer amount of damage that she provides. Coming in fourth place on our top 25 is the Boy Wonder. Zero, hero, no time Hercules is that perfect example of a character that can do just about everything. So many times in PvP, you have four other characters and you're missing a couple of roles on the team. And Hercules fills those roles so easily. Between being a great tank and being able to soak up a lot of damage with his passive, you have two instant just delete buttons with zero to hero and strength of the gods. And then, of course, his basic attack. If you've been playing this game for the better part of even six months, you have seen this basic attack destroy you match after match. Hercules entire kit is something that I feel like every new character that comes out tries to counter and glue has tried to make characters to counter Hercules. He's a problem. He's always been a problem. And he's probably always going to be a problem. At number three, allow me to introduce the newcomer. Ugh. Oh, Kida. If you guys want to know why Kida's ranked so high, just I'll wait for you. Go check out the video in the top right hand corner. It explains why Kida is just absolutely god tier status, even at five stars, even at low testing levels. We know Kida is going to be meta defining and meta changing. She does absolute everything well. Really, just the perfect example is what she does. And we've talked about Hercules and Beast and Frank doing multiple roles like tank and offense. Kida truly does it all. She's a support with great healing and amazing survivability. She has incredible thick defensive walls to get through once she's empowered and can tank and take all of the damage and protect your team as a tanky role. And then lastly, her offense capabilities, even at five stars, are out of this world. Just like Ursula, just like Zeus, at five stars, she's gonna do it all. Just enough said, right? Like Kida's introduction and arrival into DSA is literally changing the meta. She's probably gonna rise. She's probably gonna be higher than three on the next month's tier list. She's coming in at number three. In the number two spot on our top 25, we have... Now, while Tiana doesn't play multiple roles on the battlefield, she does one extremely well, and then she has a whole nother character that easily could make this top 25 list, probably in the top 15. It's gonna be the Gumbo Pot. And with the recent bug fixes to cloning Gumbo Pot, it continues to take so many hits and do so many roles alongside Tiana. Now, obviously guys, her passive and her just overall ability to absorb the onslaught of the control meta, the onslaught of harmful effects, keeps Tiana so great. She has an amazing purging basic, and then Gumbo Pot and her healing is incredible. And then, like in some sick, cruel joke, she's a princess, right? And Snow White probably is gonna make Tiana somehow even more viable. She is the cog that makes the princesses work. 
one of the most important characters in the game and if she ever becomes free to play farmable she should be the highest focus coming in at number one of course we have i'm afraid being famous isn't the same as being a true hero i mean should it really be anybody else zeus after all is the hardest character to get within the game you have to beat heroic siege on olympus raid after siege on olympus raid and you are rewarded with the best character in pvp and soon to be probably the best overall character within the game zeus's damage and zeus's entire kit for a support character alongside his stats i don't know if you played pokemon but he's like a legendary in those games like in his own right he's in a different league and in a different ball game and what i love is tiana and kita and even zeus can be countered but they just enhance all of the characters around them zeus's invincibility is just never to be slept on He's guaranteeing any other character their turn, giving them speed meter, giving them buffs. He can stun, he can throw out giant amounts of damage, throw out haste, throw out evasion. He does it all, and he has one of the best leaderships of the game, in my opinion, as well. Zeus is going to be ending this list in the number one spot. And if we're being honest, there's a pretty large gap from one to two, and even one, two, and three to the rest of the list. Alrighty, my friends. Well, there you have it. That was a long one, but I wanted to make sure with the meta changing that you guys best understand the shifts and everything happening within Disney Sorcerer's Arena. Now, again, I will be having the tier list coming out. I need the legendary to come out first with Snow White so that I can go ahead and appropriately see where she's going to change the game before we rank every single character within the game. Now, of course, as always, if you haven't already joined the Cozy Club community, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. And until next time, Stay cozy, my friends.